Yo, 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 YouTube. Back with another video. Thanks for joining me again here on the Dollar Box. This is a video I wanted to do for a little while, but I was kind of waiting till I had enough content. And uh, the new year, of course. I'm shooting this on a brand new camera that I just got for Christmas. And one of the things I like about this camera is I can also see while I'm filming, which is important to me. Um, it's one of the reasons I held off on buying a camera for to do videos um, I, I wanted something that was going to be more Wi-Fi compatible and anyway found it uh, works perfect so let's see how this first video turns out still playing with the lighting a little bit I know the lighting isn't perfect but this is what I have for today but I think you'll enjoy this video there's some good information in it and uh, it's my predictions for the card market in 2022 For the first topic, let's get the obvious out of the way. Fanatics buys tops. It's by far the biggest news we've had so far this early part of the year. And the reason that it's, I believe it's important is because we want to keep tops around as long as we can. They have the brand recognition. They've been around for 80 plus years, something like that. And uh, people collect exclusively tops products. Lots of collectors do. I have tons of collectors who message me or, or place orders for only Topps cards of their players. What about these baseball cards? I also believe the Topps purchase is important because it allows fanatics to get into the card game right away and they don't have to try to start from scratch. They're keeping the Topps employees on and they're just going to let Topps do their things and then direct it from the background. But by far the most exciting reason for Topps being acquired in my opinion, is the fact that we're going to get basketball and football tops cards again. I think this was something that was a big hole in the market the last couple of years. The market has obviously done well and nothing against Panini, but I miss my tops finest, my tops chrome. So my number two prediction is that soccer card market will explode. We've got the World Cup coming up next winter, I believe, next like holiday season, and I think it's in like November which normally it's in the summer, but we'll see how it does being being in November. But the soccer card market ran way up um, because pops were so low. Things started coming back from PSA as everybody was sending them in, and prices have come way down, and almost too far down in my opinion. And I think there's just so much potential in that market, such a world market. I think we'll see quite a bit of those um, gains this year. The World Cup? Soccer? The next one is, a, is one I know many of you will disagree with, which you know, of course is okay. Leave a comment uh, if you disagree with my prediction on this one, but I predict football cards will overtake basketball cards in popularity. I just think basketball is getting kind of boring. Um, I, there isn't as many viewers of it, the daily games, things like that, and I think football's really got the attention of a lot of investors and collectors mainly because I believe there's we're seeing a turnover in football so we have a lot of those long time quarterbacks that are starting to hang it up um, Drew Brees just retired we have Philip Rivers retired uh, Ben Roethlisberger is retiring this year Brady's got to be due soon Rodgers you know in the next few years and we're starting to see a lot of those young quarterbacks come in and play right away and play well kind of creating the new generation of uh, stars in the NFL. So we'll see how, where that goes, but I believe that football is on more of a rise and, and basketball is on more of a decline. So I think at some point that X will cross and football will be the bigger sports card market. I think baseball cards are going to struggle this year, uh, especially if there is no games to be played. I think prospecting is something that's starting to get a very limited attention because it's so hard to be good at it and you have to take so many risks and there's way more losses than there are gains. So I think new investors and, and collectors, that's fine. Collectors will, should always just buy what they want, but I think as investors come in, they're not going to be looking at as much at the baseball prospect market, especially with the potential of there being 
no baseball to be played. I think we're going to continue to see a big change at retail. I think a lot more retail products are going to become available. I know that Panini uh, has raised their prices in all their retail. I think Tops did too just recently, but I know they've they've come up a bit to, to try to fall a little more in line with hobby products and um, direct-to-consumer cards that they sell. And that's allowed them to become a little bit more available. Uh, I used to go to Meyer uh, on Saturday mornings before they would open, sit in line to buy my cards. Don't have to really do that anymore. I can go in anytime Saturday morning. They generally will have some product left. And then the last couple times I've bought stuff, they didn't even really limit me on what I could buy. And, and luckily, there'll be plenty of supply. <laughs> my next one is the scary one. I believe Panini will be overprinting everything. They're going to try to get some valuation up. I assume they're going to sell to Fanatics at some point, at least sell their U.S. card market division, or I don't know. I'm not sure how that company is is organized, but I believe at some point they're going to need to get uh, the value out of that company, and they're going to try to get as much sales as they can to up their value to make that sale as big as possible. So I think they're going to overprint, try to sell, push, push, push. Uh, maybe we'll even see cards in in places we haven't seen them before. More direct con to consumer stuff, I don't know. But uh, I believe the overprinting is going to be very real, and we have to be careful of Panini products over the next however long that they're un not under Fanatic's ownership. That being said, this is going to be a strange prediction, but I believe base cards are going to make a comeback. And the reason I say that is base cards were, got way overpriced because everybody knew to the market that's what you were buying. And uh, so consequently they had to drop way down supplies just too many, especially with all the grading stuff coming back. However, I believe that base cards will have their day again. And especially if the printing is, is controlled. Obviously, if there's overprinting, none of that will matter anyway. But I think that the printing, at least on the top side for sure, will be um, controlled or reported so we'll at least know what's out there. And that will allow for base cards to to find their, their place and get a, a stable value. One of the things I think we're really going to see change is cards that are manufactured without license. Let's face it, Fanatics basically has a monopoly on the whole thing at this point. So I think that companies like Wildcard, which is a company that I'm a big fan of, I think more and more companies are going to see that there's opportunity there for licensing direct with players. Uh, it's a little bit cheaper, you can get a little bit more in your products, you can get more on-card signatures, things like that. For example, Wildcard had cards where not only did it have an on-card signature, but it also had an actual thumbprint of that player on the card. That's something you never see in Panini or Topps products. And my number one prediction is something I've been waiting for for quite a while, is a 90s card, collector, investor, buyer, whatever you want to call it, flipper, pack ripper. I believe inserts are the next boom. We're kind of seeing that ready with Kabooms, Downtowns, uh, Color Blast, different case hit type stuff. I think there's going to be an even more push for that. The more that they put out, do, they do printing and there's more base cards and there's even more sh short print parallels. You know, you get 35 different colors of select cards and things like that. That case hit and that super rare chase insert becomes more and more important because you've got to keep people buying those cards they'll chase they'll, they'll get tons of base cards in chase of that case hit rare valuable card so I think we're gonna see a ton more of that I'm happy about that I like a lot of the inserts that are coming out the Marvel's inserts are great um, you know I, I like the downtowns the kabooms I, I like all that stuff you teach a man how to kaboom Kaboom, kaboom, kaboom! So you heard it here first. Watch for those inserts. Buy the inserts, collect the inserts, trade, sell, flip those inserts. That's where the big money is going to be in 2022. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Have a great day, and we'll see you again soon.